So let's talk about some commonly encountered alcohols. Um, the first one is methyl alcohol or methanol. This is the smallest alcohol. Um, it's, it's good as a fuel. They used to use this in racing cars. And the reason they um, went to um, alcohol over gasoline is that the fires are easier to put out. Because the methyl alcohol is uh, soluble in water, and so when you spray water on it, it dissolves. And once you get it diluted enough, it won't burn anymore. Gasoline is not soluble in water, and so it just kind of spreads around. It's a good fuel. It's also um, a great solvent. They use it in paints and lacquers and other kinds of things. Um, it's, it's also called wood alcohol, and that's from where we used to obtain it. They used to obtain methanol by heating wood at high temperature in the absence of air, and they were able to, to generate wood alcohol. Now alcohol, uh, the methyl alcohol is made by reacting hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Methyl alcohol is very toxic. Uh, it's very dangerous stuff. As, as little as one ounce or 30 milliliters can cause permanent optic nerve damage. So what happens is that your body has alcohol dehydrogenase, which metabolizes alcohol. When it metabolizes methanol, it forms formaldehyde and formic acid. Is formaldehyde, do you know what that's used for? If you take in biology? They use it to preserve uh, tissue. So like the dead frog in the plastic bag is generally preserved with formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is toxic. You definitely don't want that being formed inside your body. Formic acid is bad. Formic acid will cause the acidity of your blood to change and can cause toxic acidosis. And so the combination of these, they're going to cause um, significant damage to your eyes. Um, they can cause permanent blindness and it can also cause death. The treatment for methanol poisoning is to give the person ethanol because the alcohol dehydrogenase would prefer to work on the ethanol and so it will the two alcohols will compete and if you can keep the alcohol dehydrogenase busy with the ethanol then the methyl alcohol can pass through <coughs> unmetabolized and not cause damage. So there, you know, historically there have been people who, you know, alcoholics who were just so desperate for alcohol that they would drink almost anything. And if they turned to the methanol, they died a very, very painful death. There have also been situations, I think, where people were attempting to make ethanol and um, didn't make it quite right and ended up with with methanol. It's not a good thing. Um, that, pardon me? Don't they get that when they try to make liquor with galvanized pipe too? That could be. That also. could be. I just, you know, I have this vague recollection of the old uh, bootleggers mm -hmm. making their own whiskey and stuff and sometimes they, they didn't make what they thought they were making and the results are pretty bad. Then there's ethyl alcohol. It's the next largest. IUPAC name is ethanol. It's also called drinking alcohol or grain alcohol. And this is the alcohol that's in wine and beer and other alcoholic beverages. It's called grain alcohol because it's obtained by fermenting grains like corn, rice, barley, those sorts of things. You can also get it from obviously fermenting grapes. So this is prepared by fermentation of plant sugars by yeast and the maximum concentration that you can get from a process like that is 18% alcohol. Because at that point, the yeast enzymes that are generating the alcohol are basically killed or deactivated by the alcohol itself. So they make alcohol until it gets to a certain level and then they stop, it just shuts down. So ethanol is um, also excellent as a solvent and it's good as a fuel. Your book has a little blurb about the racing industry, they switched over to ethanol. Um, and so now the race cars use ethanol as a fuel. There's also um, ethanol that's added to our gasoline. So it is a good fuel. Um, 
if you've ever seen this term denatured alcohol. Alcohol that is sold for purposes other than human consumption is generally denatured. So if you go to the hardware store, you can buy a big can of ethanol, but it's going to be denatured. What they've done is they've added something toxic to it to keep people from drinking it. Um, ethanol is also toxic. Um, and you know, we think of it as being less toxic than methanol, and yet methanol is really only twice as toxic as ethanol is. Ethanol just doesn't cause um, blindness and other serious effects at lower concentrations. But it is, it is dangerous. Your body oxidizes it to acetaldehyde, which is toxic, and that's what gives you a hangover if you have too much. It also can cause liver damage, loss of memory, people get addicted to it, it can cause birth defects, and so, you know, yeah, it's, it's very popular in our society, but it is a chemical, and it is toxic, and you need to be careful with it. Oh, just um, one more thing about that. So, I didn't put the table from your book in here, but... So 18% is the highest you can get in like a, an unfortified wine. So how do they get higher concentrations? Well, they distill it. That's where you get distilled spirits. They'll take, um, you know, they ferment the rice or the corn or whatever they're fermenting, and then you distill it to, to increase the alcohol concentration. Because the alcohol has a lower boiling point than the water does. And so if you heat it and collect what boils off, you're going to have a lot more alcohol there than you did in your original mixture. And when they talk about proof, um, a 50% 50, 50 alcohol solution is considered 100 proof. So there's kind of some interesting little details on, in, there, in your book about ethanol. Isopropyl alcohol, or 2-propanol. This is another one that you've probably come in contact with. This is also called um, rubbing alcohol. So you can go to the, the drugstore and buy 70% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you're not going to want to drink this. Um, it tastes nasty. If you've ever accidentally gotten any in your mouth, it tastes really, really nasty. So you don't want to you don't want to drink it because it tastes bad. And also... It's very toxic. The good thing about it, though, if you think of it this way, is it usually induces vomiting. And so even if you were to drink isopropyl alcohol, um, it probably won't stay down long enough to poison you. You'll just, it'll come right back up again. Um, in, in your body, it's oxidized to acetone. As you can imagine, that's not a good thing to have in your body either. So that's isopropyl alcohol. It's used for, you know, disinfecting skin prior to injections. It's used, they used to use it um, to cool people down when they had a fever. Um, that's generally not necessary. But because it has a low boiling point and evaporates quickly, when, when you rub it on the skin, it will feel cold because it evaporates and it sucks the heat out of your body. And then we've got these two diols, ethylene glycol and propylene glycol. And a glycol is just a diol in which the two hydroxyl groups are attached on adjacent carbon atoms. So here's ethylene glycol and here's propylene glycol. So I did not put this graphic in, although I might have made the same mistake. This is the wrong structure. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, there's try to fix it there. Yeah. In a glycol, the two hydroxyl groups are on adjacent carbons. So for propylene glycol, they have to be adjacent. 
These are um, colorless, odorless, they mix well with water, and they're used as antifreeze because they will reduce the, um, the freezing point of water. They're also used as de-icers on airplanes. So you don't want a lot of ice built up on the wings of your airplane. Um, ethylene glycol is very toxic. Your book doesn't mention this, but I seem to recall that it has a somewhat sweet taste. And so you sometimes hear about dogs or small children being poisoned by ethylene glycol antifreeze when it's not disposed of properly. Um, the antifreeze has that bright green color um, as a safety precaution. That is not the color of ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is colorless, but they add that color in there to make people aware, hey, this isn't water. Some people aren't real careful what they drink. Interestingly, just adding that one carbon here, propylene glycol, is non-toxic. It's really quite safe, and it's actually used in drug preparations as a solvent. So ethylene glycol, very toxic. Propylene glycol, not at all. And then there's this triol, glycerol. So a gl glycerol is a triol, and it's got three um, hydroxyl groups on three adjacent carbons. You could have um, an isomer of this, where you a positional isomer where you had this hydroxyl group on one of these other carbons, and then it would not be glycerol. Glycerol is is clear, like the two diols we talked about, but it's it's very thick, and it's also called glycerin, and that may be a name that you're familiar with. Glycerin is a byproduct of fat metabolism, so it occurs in your body. They use it in skin lotions and soaps. It's got lubricating and hydrating properties, so it's a very useful thing. Um, it's sometimes called a biological antifreeze because organisms that live where the temperature drops very low often produce a lot of glycerol in their bodies to keep their cells from freezing. Because when a cell freezes, when the water in a cell freezes, this, the membranes and the cell walls break and then you don't have a living organism anymore.